Hi, this is Jim James here, and I am the Silver Fox Entrepreneur, those of you that remember and subscribe to this podcast. So my incarnation in normal life is as the founder and managing director of East West Public Relations, which is an agency that I founded in Singapore in 1995. Now, I've been uh, not podcasting, and um, I decided that I need to stop that. I need to get back on the mic. I had listened this morning to an Action Coach uh, webinar with a, a guy called Steve uh, Judge, who is a two-time World Paralympian champion. And Steve talked about resilience and about the need to tackle the fears head on and about keeping going when times are tough. So I'm back on the mic because I have to confess that I set some targets for myself that were frankly, you know, pretty hard to achieve. And as a result, I was you know, I was satisfying myself by failing. So I'm back on the mic and I really wanted to share what I know best, which is PR and entrepreneurship. So I've been working on a course called Speak PR, and that is all about how entrepreneurs can use public relations to get noticed for what they do. It's how I've built my own businesses in Asia, in Singapore first and in China, and now back in the UK without using big budgets. So I thank Steve for reminding me that uh, we have to set a target and that there will be some obstacles on the way and some moments of being a bit a bit demoralized. Uh, but we have to get to just smaller bite-sized tasks that are achievable rather than thinking the end goal is going to be attained so quickly. So I wanted to share that um, today we did have some great success with um, our platform called Zoho. And for those of us that are trying to communicate on a daily basis and build a brand, one of the challenges is simply time. How many times can you afford to post to Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram? And we were taking up about an hour or so a day just trying to manage the distribution. Over the weekend, I spent some time looking for a solution and realized that Zoho, which is a platform I use for other aspects of the business, including the newsletters and uh, the CRM, has a social function. And so Rob Oakley, who works with me, and I have been looking at that. And today, within about an hour and a half, we were able to log in and connect our five social media accounts directly using the Zoho Social. It really is a remarkably simple and comprehensive platform. Even I can, can do it. And so what we've done is we've now been able to take content and schedule content to go out over the next two weeks to those five platforms. We enter them as blog posts on our website, which is also hosted by Zoho. And the software in Zoho Social will automatically post them either by uh, scheduling or we can uh, allow the software to schedule when they're most likely to be read or just put them in a queue. This is transformative because it means that we can still reach out to the people that we need to talk to, but it won't take very long. So to give you an idea, we've got some 1,200 people on our Facebook. Um, we've got a page and a group. Uh, I've got some 6,000 followers on LinkedIn, and we've got now a, a 600 people on our uh, LinkedIn page as well, or group as well. And um, then we've also got um, Twitter, some 600 people. So along with our newsletter, we've got the best part of maybe eight to 9,000 people that a one-man army like me has over the last 25 years met and has been in contact with and who has stayed in touch. So what this means is that even small companies like ours, as long as we keep hold of the people that contact us 
have an amazing opportunity to use this tool set. Uh, and there are others like HubSpot and Buzz, Buzz Sprout. Um, there, are, there are lots of them out and we've got them listed on our technology applications directory, which is on our website. As entrepreneurs, we can use this technology in a way that puts us on, a, on an equal footing with big companies. But this afternoon, I had a phone call from an old friend uh, called Tim Charlton, who publishes media in Asia. And Tim and I met each other um, back in about 96, 97. He's publishing trade publications in power and gas and finance. And he told me that Haymarket had just announced that they are closing. Uh, two of their big titles. Uh, one is called uh, Finance Asia. And they're going to focus instead on making the, uh, the business run on events, forums and conferences. Now, obviously, what we also know about that is that um, those events are not going to be happening for some time to come. So Tim and I talked about it. The, the, the challenge now for the publishers is how do you how do they continue to provide value for advertisers and for PR companies and for uh, marketing and entrepreneurs how do you keep reaching the audience that in the past you turned to the media for so Haymarket which is founded by Michael Heseltine um, my, Margaret Thatcher's defence secretary at the time um, these publications are are going to have to pivot drastically. They're going to have to use digital themselves. Um, but what it means is that they're not going to have necessarily the monopoly on contact to those people that in the past just subscribed to their publications. Now, obviously, for people like Tim, um, he's got to make decisions about the staff that he's got, the sales team that, that run the ads, the, the journalists, there's all the printers and so on. There's a whole supply chain involved in producing a publication. And some of these people are going to are going to have to go in the same way that we saw in the move to print um, some years ago, five, six years ago. So there's a report that came out from McKinsey this week that talks about how coronavirus <clears throat> is really going to um, be a catalyst for change and it's bringing forward the digital and the digitalization of our lives by you know, five to maybe 10 years. And publishing, which is already struggling with print, is going to be 100% print because it just doesn't make sense. The advertisers like um, the big banks are saying, well, if you can't get the magazine into the hands of these executives, then, then there's no point in me paying for that. And Tim, who publishes a magazine called Singapore Business Review, they put them in airline lounges and hotels and people are not there. So all these people that were publishing these glossy publications for areas of communal activity are finding that there's no activity in the communal places anymore. And that's having a knock on effect for their advertising. So this McKinsey report is talking about how now not only do we not want to go to work necessarily in the same way. Um, but also we're communicating obviously through Zoom and through podcasts and so on. Now, the silver lining is that for entrepreneurs like me running small agencies, there are many, many ways that we can capitalize on this. So I've converted my agency to be an on-demand agency. So everyone working for me is turning up um, to do the job. They're not hired anymore because if they're not coming to an office, uh, they have the freedom to sell their services as and when they want. In fact, this is a model I've adopted uh, nearly four years ago because when I was running the business in China, the, the traffic and the congestion and the price of housing in Beijing was so high that it meant that young people didn't want to travel to work. So it became inevitable even before coronavirus that this was going to be a way to go. But what it also means when we look at tools like Zoho is that even a small business like me can have a footprint of a scale of a big company 
because it's no longer about paying five, six thousand dollars for an advert. It's about how much compelling content that I can produce and share. And reading an article about how LinkedIn works and the algorithms, which we'll post later on our website, the algorithms for all of these platforms are now going about levels of interest. And as we've seen from in, in some bad ways with Cambridge Analytica, people are getting the content that, that they're looking for. And that's kind of being reinforced by getting more of that. So if you can kind of get into the jet stream of current thought, uh, like Captain Tom did uh, with his record breaking walk for NHS, you could find yourself even as a as an entrepreneur playing the same Facebook pages, the same LinkedIn pages as big brands. So I started my day with Steve Judge talking about the physical obstacles he overcame to get to his goal and his goals. And it reminded me that one of my goals was to share my knowledge through the podcast with entrepreneurs on how to get noticed for free. So I'm getting back on the bike. I'm going to be a bit wobbly at the beginning, probably not that quick, and I'm going to be out of breath from time to time, but I'm determined to get fitter and get better at this. So I hope this provides some valuable uh, insight for you and that you find it some use. And then next we have the opportunity that is presented by COVID, which is that for entrepreneurs around the world, you can use our Speak PR methodology, which we have on our website, and I'll go into over the coming weeks and months, which is a five stage methodology that you can use to get noticed for free. So thanks so much for listening. And if you have enjoyed this, then please subscribe and share it with other entrepreneurs that you think would like to get some tools and some tips and some company from a fellow entrepreneur on the journey to getting noticed. Stay safe, stay profitable, and keep, keep communicating.